The British Boxing Border Control guidelines have been released about, well, probably a few days now. Um, we've seen Eddie and, and Matt Troom, um, I think you'd call it a teaser clip, about a uh, fight camp at uh, the Brentwood yeah. Mansion. Um, just your thoughts, really. It, it's it's taken a few people by surprise. I think some differing opinions on it, as is often the case in boxing. What do you make of it? What, what are the different opinions? What? About well, the reason why I would like to speak to you is you you are of the unique position of being a trainer as well as a manager and also have experience as a promoter. So the board circular that was sent round with the guidelines, do you think the guidelines that they've put in place are they feasible? Do you think that they'll be able you'll be able to maintain those in order to get boxing back behind closed doors? Um, there's a lot. There's a lot. And there's, so right from when, when Eddie was planning this and everything, we, we, I've got Jordan Gill, I've got Opie Price, so we've been, we've been aware about what's, what he's planning. Um, and what I will say is that you have to plan for when things start moving again. You can't just sit there and say, oh, we'll wait. As soon as the government says that in X amount of time you can go back to work, you can do this, you can do that, then we'll start planet no you plan for when you, you, you get lift off it's like us we're still training for when we get lift off right people are oh, what are you training for you know you've got no fights well, no but we're preparing now for when we do that's what you do um there's a there's a few things in there that, as far as the board's concerned where you look at it and think oh, how's that going to work no spitting how's that going to work you, 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 your nose starts bleeding, you've got, nose, you've got blood going into your mouth, and what are you meant to do? So, you, you little things like that are just not feasible. Um, the thing is, we're all going to be quarantined, tested, quarantined, and um, social distancing the best that we can. And I think it's the same in any, any walk of life. If you want things to get back to normal, because this virus is going around. It's going to be around. People that think it's just going to disappear. It's not just going to disappear. If it just disappears, media's doing a good job. Just like if it was as, if it's as bad as what, what, what the media have made out. Do you know what I mean? How, how do you judge it? Because there's, a, there's, an agenda, there's always an agenda in everything, especially with the media and the control by it and what, what, you know, who's running things. You know? Sometimes things aren't as bad as what, what, they've made out to be and sometimes things aren't as good as what they made out to be so all of a sudden just from, from it being an absolute disaster all of a sudden like that now it's like safe to go back to it's safe to send kids back to school it's safe to go you know to work and stuff like that it's always fine but what do you do, do, you do? the country needs to move the country needs to, to, to have the economic wheel turning again so Things have to be put in place in order for everybody to get back to work. Now, people say sport isn't important. Sport's not important if your job is in an office, in, in, a, as a, in construction, uh, as a school teacher or whatever like that, a doctor or a nurse. Sport's not important because your job is important to you. But the people that work in sport, it's important to them because that's where we make our living. You know, that, that, there's not there's not many that in, in boxing that can afford to not work again. You know, all through the sport, whether it's promoters, managers, trainers, fighters, cutsmen, people that are working associated with sport reporters, boxing reporters, everybody needs sport to be moving in order for them to earn some money. So we have to find a way to get, get this moving as well. It's not just sport, but it's not recreation for us. That's the difference. It's people see it as recreation that don't work in it. So they think, well, it's not important you know, what you're worrying about that for. It's like people moaning about football side. Well, it's their livelihood as well. So they need to look at things that going on. You know? I might look at a garden centre. So, well, why is, why is, it, why is a garden centre going on? Well, that's not important, is it? But it's their job. That's what they do. So they need it to be, to be moving. So we have to find ways. And what they're doing is this is an unknown... Is it? Is it, yeah, is it, no experience to call on this. They're doing the best, whether it's the border control, whether it's Eddie, and I don't see anybody else making plans yet and, and being bold and, and coming out. And one thing I will say about Eddie is that 
stubbornness and desire, determination, call it what you want. His work ethic is phenomenal. It is phenomenal. And whether you like him or you don't, and whether you accuse the kissing his ass or you're not, you have to give credit where it's due. And what he's done and what he's trying to do to get the wheels going, and trying to trying to get boxing going for the for fighters, it's phenomenal. You know, it's, it's not something that you just you just put together like that. This will cost him a lot of money, a lot of money. The, for any promoter to put on a show, because you've not got ticket sales, it's a fucking disaster. It's a complete disaster because because. People just think that promoters are swimming in, swimming in money. No, they're not. No, they're not. Even if you have TV money, your Frank Warren, your Eddie Hearns, your McKenzie's, the promoters that have had TV money, they've lost money on shows. And I'm talking about big money on shows. So, your Carl Green, your Steffi Bulls, Steve Goodwin, your, 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 your small old promoters like that, Steve Woods, they've lost shit loads of money on shows. Because they don't have TV. When I was promoting, lost shitloads of money on show. People come in and they just see the crowd and they think, oh, it's packed out, yeah? But they don't look at all the others. You, you might be packed out because you have one fighter or two fighters that sell well enough to cover their fight and put a bit of money into the pot. But then you might have three or four fighters on the, on the show that are just covering their fight, and you might have a couple that are stinking the place out and, and you're losing loads of money on. So it just completely takes that away. And... With these guidelines that the board's put in, this is going to cost money. You know, for the actual guidelines, it's going to cost money to, to, to do. It's like we had it with, with what I'm saying with it. It's going to have to take over a hotel. That's going to cost money itself. You're not just booking a few rooms. You're going to have to literally, you're going to have to book the whole hotel out and, and do it that way in order for it just to be the fighters, all quarantined, everybody together, that's it. The old tested, all quarantined, that's it. Nobody else can come in. Nobody else can, can, can infiltrate that fight camp. So there's all them sort of things. With, you know, you know, there's so many things that are added to it. And any promoter that wants to wants to put on a show, it's going to have to do something similar, and it's going to cost them a lot of money. It's a it's a we're in a really bad spot. We're in a really bad spot. But your other option is, what you start, you should wait until the vaccine. You should wait until the cure or it's gone or whatever, right? You don't know when that's going to be. There may not be a vaccine that cures it. There may not be. It may be hit. You remember when, remember when AIDS came out, right? Everybody thought that was the end. Oh, that's it. Everyone's going to die. And this, 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 right? Well, they've got drugs to manage it, HIV and things like that. But there's no cure for it. There's no cure. We're, we're living around it. And, and this may be a, a virus where we have to live around it. So we have to change our, our lifestyles and not greet each other with big hugs and fist bumps and handshakes, you know? It might be a simple hello. And you may have to keep that, that social distancing. And it may be a case where every show we have to be tested to make sure that, at least for a couple of years, to make sure that it, it, you're safe with the people that you're around. Um, there is no... There is no right answer to it yet because we don't know the full questions of it yet you know we don't it's, it's very difficult and anyone that's at least attempting to try and help the world move should be given credit you know anyone that's attempting and, and anyone that's the, you know and that's the border control and the promoters you know and then the fighters that are willing to fight but fighters need to fight because otherwise they're not earning no money in July, kind of second week of July is the date that has been banded about um, the beat on yeah. the street, as it were. That's that's what eight weeks away. There, they're about seven yeah. or eight weeks away. Considering yeah. gyms are not open, health and fitness isn't open. Is it realistic to expect, for example, you manage fighters, you train fighters? Would you be happy to to send your fighters in there without adequate pre preparation, whether that be sparring, whether that be other time around the gym? Is that a, is that a major concern? Okay, so, so there's a couple of angles you look at. Right, is we've been banging on right since this lockdown started. Been saying, I've been, I've said to my fighters, and my fighters have been doing it. I've seen other promoters mention it and stuff. Be ready. Keep yourself in shape. This is where you've got a chance to keep yourself in shape. Look after yourself. Don't blow up, blow up in weight. Do everything you can. Obviously, you can't spar. 
might not be able to get no pad work in. But get everything else in you can. So at least if you wait and check every then once we get the green light with the gyms open, you get a few weeks for sparring, like you would do in a camp anyway, and then you're ready to fight. Now, if you turn back the clock a few years ago, fighters didn't have twelve week preparation for fight. Fighters didn't have ten week preparation for fight. And not all fighters had eight week preparation for fight. You look through a lot of fighters would fight regular. You know, a lot of good fighters would fight regular. Um I remember Ryan Rhodes got held the the quickest Lonsdale belt. I think he won it and defended it twice in, in ninety days. Now, older than that, fighters would fight so many times in a month. That means that you don't have camps and camps and camps. These days, fighters seem to want a training camp for a four-rounder. I think those days are going to go out the window because you're not getting forced to fight, but if a promoter comes to you and says, I've got a date July the 4th, it's eight weeks away, do you want to be on it? or not, and if you say, no, I, I don't think I'll be ready, okay, that's not a problem. But you'll go to the back of the queue and you have to wait for another day. Now, there's not going to be shows like you know, there has been, where there's loads of shows, loads of shows in TV, loads of shows in week. It's, it's not going to be like that, you know? We, we might, it's like, it's like Jordan will be ready. He'll be ready for do like that. Reason being is that we've been training by FaceTime. He's got, he, he, bought, he didn't have a bag at home. He bought a bag, got a bag put up. Hope he bought a bag, got a bag put up. So they were able to do the bag work. Bag work. Now, Jordan's fortunate because his dad used to coach him as an amateur, so he's, he's, his dad knows what he's doing. Right. Now, there's a million keep fitters, uh, personal trainers, people that have become personal trainers just by holding pads. You've seen it. Everybody's holding pads for everybody. They're also going to be a personal Then these people that say, oh, I can hold pads for them. I want to be a boxing trainer. You can all get somebody just to hold some pads or something, make a bag, get, you know, just get something like that. The, the key thing is, is that we need sparring. We need sparring. So we need a few weeks for sparring. I want a few weeks sparring and having that one-to-one time in person with my fire before he goes into fire. Now, if you gave me, we've got eight weeks, right? But, there have been fighters that have won world titles that have come from being sat on a couch, not in training at all, to then going to the gym and training, and in eight weeks, six weeks, they've won world titles. Right? So if you've been one of these fighters that has maintained a level of conditioning and fitness, been working everything that you can, apart from the pads and apart from, apart from sparring, then you've been working on your technique and everything, but then you get the go-ahead and say you get five weeks of training before a fire. You're boxing a six, eight rounder, even a ten rounder. The fighters in the past used to do it. It's just that we're spoiled these days. Because we get ten, twelve weeks, not if we're fire. Maybe you're gonna have to go back to where some fighters are gonna have to go, you know what? Old school, I'm a professional fighter, not just when I've got a date. Maybe I've got to keep a level of fitness all, all, all the way around and then go into camp and, and, and get a sparring in for a few weeks. It can be done. It's who wants to do it. And, and everybody's going to have a choice to do it. But when phone goes and you get offered a fight, do you want to fight? Yes or no? That is your answer. Yes or no? The problem is, is because of the situation, the promoters aren't going to be in a, a situation where perhaps they can turn around and say, um, well, I can put... 10 dates on a year. So you don't mind. if you don't want to box that one, you can box on this next week. No. Because all these promoters have got all these fighters and if we're only allowed, allowed to have five fights on a bill, everyone's scrambling. But who's really scrambling? Because if you put two or three stone on during lockdown, you're pretty much fucked. But if your weight's all right during lockdown, we've got eight weeks. Okay. But I would be... With any of my fighters, because the way that I've been talking all out, throughout all lockdown, I've said to them, listen, we want to be ready for when the promoters are putting on shows on. You want to be at the front of the queue because everyone's going to be scrambling wanting to get a fight. But you want to be physically as ready as you can be. 
So that means you're ready to go straight into sparring. You have to have an element of fitness before you go into sparring. So if you've not been training during lockdown, and if you've not been looking after yourself during lockdown, weight-wise, you can't then go into a gym and then just start thinking you're going to spar and be, be great. You've got to have that fitness and, 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 and conditioning to get into that sparring session or to get any decent sparring out of it. Now, my fighters are ready to do that because right from the start of lockdown, so I've been on them. Stay in shape, stay in shape. We don't know how long this is going to be. Every three weeks we'll be like, okay, okay, stay in shape, stay in shape. Now it's down to them whether they've done it or not. If they've done it and if they're in, if they're in condition, they're in shape, so then as soon as the gyms are allowed, they're able to go straight in and, and, and start sparring. Happy days. If not, then they'll just have to wait for other days. But I I would have been... I'm surprised that it is... If it is staying July 4th, I thought it might just get nudged back a little bit to... For the first show being end up being you know middle July. But if these are just plans, they're not concrete. Oh, this is it because we don't know. We've not, we've not had no green lights officially yet. I mean, you've kind of touched on it and, and talked around it there, but with fighters who potentially aren't in, in, they have put on a bit of weight, or for whatever reason they're not. You know, for some fighters, their coach could be in a different country, or they they're just not able to to make those dates properly. Is there a risk that these guys, because of, I mean, the whole situation around the world at the minute, financially and, and for fighters yeah. in particular, is there, a, is there a risk of them taking these fights when they're not ready purely because they are in such short supply and because everyone is so desperate for the money? But that can, that, that happens whether it's whether it was COVID-19 or not. How many times have you seen a fighter, um, say, you know, even on a TV show or whatever, Take a fight, and then after the fight, say I weren't, you know, I, I've not, you know, I've not really trained much. I've, I've been out of shape. But I seem to remember. I remember. I think Dave Allen said something like that once. Said it his whole career. Know? Right. So, so what I'm saying is, is there are fighters that do take fights when they're not. Here. So that's nothing to do with COVID nineteen. So what, what, what's the difference there? If the if the fighters are going to do that, they're going to do that. But they're then, you know, they know that. They're going into the ring unprepared. You know that they're going into, yeah, and that's that's not really going to be great for their careers. What's the point in getting there as quick as you can on the first shows if you're not in shape, and then getting beat, and then going back down to the bottom, of, you know, bottom of the pile again? I would I would hope that, that the fighters would be smart because as a manager, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't tell. One of my fighters, if I knew if he hadn't been trained or as a trainer, if my fighters haven't been training throughout this, then I would say you're not you're not really ready for July. That's it. My fighters have been training, and I see them. I've trained them. The fit, the in shape, we need the sparring. But they're fit enough to go in. You know, somebody like Dylan White took himself away and he's been in quarantine on camp, so he will be fit to go in and fight a real fight, a real fight. And when I say a real fight, I'm like a 12 round. Imagine he'd be able to do a 10 12 rounder because he's, he's been training as, 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 as it's normal. You know, he'll just need the week for sparring and things like that if he's not got any sparring partners in camp. But for six rounders and eight rounders, for a lot of, for a lot of the pros, I would, I would say that it should be manageable. It should be manageable. Final one on the COVID 19 return or, or anticipated return. Something we've spoken about in that initial um, period after the, the lockdown at the start and the cancellation of the shows is the lack of drug testing. Now, that's something else that is going to be, from my opinion, from the outside looking in, pretty much impossible to, to tackle still. There's, the drug testing is still not is still not being taken out and, and carried out at the minute. How are we going to, from my point of view, there's, there's no way that we can assure that the fighters who are fighting on these bills are clean. No, true. True, hundred percent. There's nothing, and that's where a fighter's got to decide whether he whether he wants to take the fight or not. Let's take that down to the fighter whether he wants to take the fight or not, because that is something that that, um, thanks to the idiots that decide to announce things like that, um, we're all aware that you know there's absolutely minimal drug testing going on, um, which isn't. Which isn't great at all, but I actually thought, oh, what was it? What was it? oh, not not saying it's happening, 
But all of a sudden you've got all these old, you know, you, well, not all of a sudden, but you've got these old fighters are looking in fantastic shape and, and things like that. I wonder, I wonder how many of them have been on some gear, you know, and they're not, they're not going to be tested anyway. They're not fighting, they're not special anymore. But just all of a sudden look fantastic, you know. Some of them might, might have been on stuff. It, it's, just, it's just, we don't know. I, I saw a picture of a, a, a Miller looking in, in good nick the other day. And it's like, oh, okay. It's, it's, it's shit. It is. But it's shit in day-to-day life anyway. Forget COVID. Because there are a lot of these fighters out there that are cheating anyway. You know? Um, I feel that, I feel that the ones that were cheating, the ones that, are, the majority of fighters that are going to cheat now, probably would have been cheating before anyway. It's just that now they're not looking over the shoulder. Oh, but I would like, I would like to think that. I would like to think that, that, there's enough fighters out there, honest fighters out there, especially domestically, that aren't thinking, haven't thought straight away, oh, okay, right, now there's no testing, we're going to go on do. I would like to, you know, the fighters that I know personally, from other camps and stuff like that, it's hard to say, but there's not many that I, that I know and I, I talk to that I would think, oh, yeah, you're a feeling that you teach it. I don't know, I'd like to give them a lot more credit than that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I think. For yeah, and I, I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I'm probably just, I'm just because you, you know I'm on a personal level, so you think, oh, it, it probably not. But I don't know. I don't. It's, it's shit. Listen, it's shit, and it's one of those that until somebody fails the test, you can't point fingers because you don't know. Um, but it's obviously it's happening. It's obviously it's going to happen. Um, it, yeah, it's shit. It's it's a very difficult one because what do you do? To me, that, like I said, it's down, it's down to the fighter whether they're willing, whether they're willing to take a fight or not. To me, that to be fair, that that is just as big a concern as as yeah. the COVID for me personally. Um, yeah. As an advocate of clean sport, etc. But anyway, yeah. before I let you go, yeah, it, um, it is. It's, it's, it, it is. It is a worry. You know, it is a worry. Um, you know, it's 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 one of those things. Where it's so that so so do we wait? Do we wait until Varda and you can start saying right? We're testing again now. Do we wait until then before we even start looking at dates for fights? Well, I, what what do you do? Because then all these fighters that, are, that careers are dwindling away and are losing months and months out of their careers, especially the older fighters. Every month that goes past. Your Chisoris, you, you know, even your Dylan White, it was, it was at that time where he needs that title fight as soon as possible because he's been having hard fights around. Every fighter's getting older, you know, but you want, they want to be active, they want to be fighting. So do we wait I mean, for longer or longer so then before you even know it, it's the end of the year or is it the beginning of the year? We just, we just don't know. So that's where the fighters have got to be in a choice and say, yes, I want to fight. Yes, I will take that risk, you know, and, and if they want to fight, knowing that they might be fighting a drug, drug sheet, then, you know, then they, they fight. But it's kind of like that. Anyway, because we don't actually, until two fighters clear the drugs test that comes after the fight, we don't actually know whether, whether you, when you're fighting on that fight night, you don't actually know whether you're fighting a drug sheet or not. You know? And just because they've passed the drugs test, doesn't mean that you haven't bought a drug sheet anyway because he might have just done his cycle right and, and got away with it. So, you, you know, there are fights that have been going on where you have beaten or you have lost to where there were drug cheats, but you just never know. So we're kind of like in the same sort of situation where you're going to be like, well, are we, are we? Yeah, I get that. I, I, I get that. I think for me, it's just the uneasiness of there being none. Oh, of course. Yeah. Listen, of course. But what I'm saying is, is until I can't, I can't make you can say right. We're starting drug testing. I can't control that. Although I want it, I can't control that. But what I can say, what I can say to you is that my fighters are desperate to buy it. You know, Jordan Gill, he's desperate to buy it. He's not bought it. Come September is, I think September is. He have not bought it for a year, and before that is, is a once in in how many months? You know, maybe ten months or something. So he's desperate to buy it. He wants the momentum going in his career again. I've got a whole price who's had two fights coming off the back of the uh, uh, boxing in Saudi. His career's just gone boom and just gone flat again. 
he wants to get going. You know? And then there's a part as that manager. They're, they're all wanting to, they're all dying to fight. So, I can't control you, Kat, And they can't control you, Kat, But they want to fight because they want the careers going. So, this is what I'm saying is, although it's not easy, although it's not, it, it, it's not nice, they want to fight. But if it's COVID or not, when they get in the ring with somebody, they don't know whether they're fighting a drug cheat or not. It's kind of like the same thing. You can't go in there thinking, what if there's a drug cheat, what, what if not, what is a drug cheat, what is not. You can't. You just go in there to win. And then if you pass these drug tests, you pass these drug tests. If it fails, you fail. All the difference is you're having the same mentality going in, but you're not knowing when you come out. Anyway. You, you won't know whether it's passed or not. You've not had one. But I suspect that maybe, I do suspect that maybe, that when this is all when this is all done, um, when the dates finalised and everything, maybe you can then will come out to, to test you on fight nights, maybe. But also when you talk about this drug testing, right? Don't forget you the only fighters on fight night that ain't getting that are getting drug tested are the championship fights. Everybody everybody else is not in boxing not in not in title fights. Nobody's getting tested in those fights. So it's, there's no difference. The majority of fighters that are going to be boxing on these behind the closed doors fights, there is no difference because they don't get drug tested anyway. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Mm. So if you don't get drug tested anyway on, on normal normal nights, because like, they're not boxing for the title, then if they're boxing a non-title fight on a, on, a, on this behind closed door circuit, just fight. It's the exact same situation. Yeah, it's worth pointing that out. Different. It's worth pointing that yeah. out for people who are who are watching this. I mean, for example, I won't mention any names, but I was speaking to a, a current British champion yesterday who told me he's only ever been drug tested once in his whole professional career. He's British. And that was when he fought for the title. And that was when he fought for the title. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That we are, in this country, we all get is the, the the random door knocking by you, Pat, is very random. It's very random. It's very it 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 is minuscule in comparison to the amount of fighters that are, but. On fight night testing, we only get tested for championship fights. So when people go on about this, you're only being concerned about the top of the bills. Two fights, maybe, maybe three. It's champion. But on these five card, five show, uh, five card shows, how many championship fights are going to be on them bills? The majority of fighters are going to make up aren't going to be title fights. I would imagine, I would imagine. But they're just in the exact same position as what we had before COVID. Not getting drug drug tested, so they don't know if the man's drug te- uh, on drugs or not. It, it's it's, it's kind of like the same sort of thing from the same mentality thing from. But you know, this is where we we have that choice: Do you want to fight or don't you want to fight? It's like, do you want to box behind closed doors or not? Some fighters are saying, "Oh no, I want to wait until there's crowds." Well, they might not be crowds for a long, long time. You're willing to just part your, your career, hoping the crowds are allowed back in. It's, it's a very difficult situation for everybody. There is no right answer. Nobody knows all the answers. It's just that some people are trying to put things into place, whether it's trainers, managers, fighters, promoters. We're trying to put things into place for when we start moving the best that we can. We're trying to do it the best we can. You know? And that's, that's all I'll say as far as Eddie's concerned, I'm concerned, my fighters are concerned, and everybody else. We're trying. We haven't got all the answers, but we're trying seems that a lot of people on Twitter do have all the answers, but they just write about it and they don't actually go out there and do things. Some people kind of do things. Might not be right, might not please everybody, but it will please people that want to get their lives back rolling and want to get get back living, you know, the life that they chose. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I think, again, it's it's fair to point out that this is unprecedented territories and everybody's kind of winging it a little bit. But Yeah, 100%. Such is life. Um, Before I let you go, we mentioned about uh, fans coming back in. You mentioned these big title fights. It it seems to me that the longer the time goes, the less likely we are to see some of the, the elite level fights come back. Would you agree with that? I can't see them coming back behind behind closed doors can't I can't see your, your big your big massive fight behind closed doors I just can't see it um, it's hard to visualise and imagine um, because it's not happened yet you know after the first show 
once we see the first show run and how it goes, then we might have a little bit more of a clue and might, you know, people might, oh, okay, it wasn't as bad as what we thought. Um, but, but until that, we don't, we don't know, we're just guessing, we're just imagining. Uh, but finances, that's a big punt for a promoter to put on a massive, massive fight with no gain and just rely on, on the TV money. It's, it just doesn't work. Um, I would imagine for the big fights, like, that we all want to see, um, I would imagine numbers would be good for viewing. I would imagine numbers would be great. Um, but, I don't know, it may, listen, we may not have a choice. We may not, listen, every, everybody's been packing the tubes and, and the buses out. In three weeks' time, it might have a massive spike and everyone might say, oh, well, that's it, lockdown back on. You don't know. You don't know, because it's, it's just completely unknown. You know, or, it may work out that things things start moving and oh, please God they do um, and we just live our lives around it and, and be smart with it. We've seen um, obviously Saudi Arabia, we've also seen um, China mentioned as a potential destination, so Croatia come out of left field for Joshua Pulev. Yeah, that's not Croatia. Yeah. Um, by the way, Croatia, where they're talking about doing that, po- is in Pula in Croatia. I actually went there on I say holiday, I went to a music festival there when I was 21. Right. My twenty first birthday. Lovely part of the world. Completely Might have random. No, well, no, it's the same part. It's the same part. It's in like in a the the venue that has been talked about for Joshua Pulev is like an abandoned coliseum or like an old vintage. Really? Yeah. So that would be that would be rather interesting. But is that the only way we're going to see these fights if they go abroad? Potentially big site fees. Obviously, we know about Saudi and and the investment that they're they're prepared to make. Would that be the only way to to get these fights? Big site fees and big TV money. It's all down to who pays the biggest offer, isn't it? Ultimately, that's that's what it is. Um, obviously, as a British fight fan, I want to see Joshua Fury at Wembley Stadium packed out. Fight week over here would be absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. But if the Middle East or Croatia, I, I don't know where the money would come from there. It's compared with the least. But if if somebody from abroad came in with a big fat offer. Where the fighter is going to be earning double or whatever, it's very hard to tell a fighter you can earn double boxing over there. But I think you should box at home. You should box in Britain. And just get half the money. Very very hard because you know I thought all that we all want to see it and it would be like fuming and, and up in arms about it taking taking place ab- abroad. And um, every single person out there, if they were told that they could do the same job for somebody else that they're in now, and they're going to get paid double or triple. Would, would you really turn it down? No, it's, it's it's very difficult, especially when especially when you you're in a you're in a window where you can only earn money from your sport, from your living, for like some amount of years, then you retire, and that money, whatever money you've got there, kind of like gonna gonna last you for the rest of your life and your family's life and, and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's difficult, and you're risking your life every time you get in the ring. So, who, who am I as a fan to say to to a fighter, yeah, go in there, risk your life? You could get paid double for risking your life the exact same mo- uh, amount, but no, I think you should risk your life for half the money just so I can come there and I can I can watch it, I can watch the fight live. It's a bit difficult. Plus, you get to go back to Saudi Arabia, Dave. You love Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah <laughs> plenty to do in Saudi isn't there mate yeah listen it was a great it was a great experience the fire night was wicked I loved it I loved it um, but yeah the downtime was, was was long the downtime was very down <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Dave, I think we're about there. I was going to bore you to death for another 15 minutes to talk about Joshua Fury, but we'll save that for another time. Um, I'm very grateful for your time, um, as always. So I will let you go. But, yep, I found that very interesting. Hopefully everybody else did. Like, like I said, listen, there's people that are going to disagree with me and people are going to think I'm chatting shit as usual, but it's just there is no... There is, I, don't, I don't have the answers. I'm just trying to work things the best way I can and try and get things moving the best way I can. Um, and I think if we just, you know, fucking doom and gloom about every idea that comes up, no ideas would get going. No idea. I'm sure when, when the, you know, ideas have, have, have 
everything that we see around us. When somebody came with that idea to invent, invent this or to do this, put on this event, I'm sure people were out there saying, that's never going to work. What are you doing that for? But shit works. And it only works if you try it. So let's see where we go. Yeah, I'm not sure people would have been all over Twitter back in those days. I didn't know what it turned into. <laughs> right, okay, Dave, always a pleasure. Thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social. Um, hope, you, hope I've managed to keep you somewhat entertained. Um, and yes, yeah. I will catch up with you soon. Take care, mate. Cheers. Thanks for that.